بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الله الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى حسن the people of Iman the people of this dunya for an objective تاريخ and history best testimony to the occurrences of time the different occurrences and events which is a lesson for the people of Iman amongst them is Adam alayhi salatu salam where Iblis made effort to take them out from Jannah and the bounties of Jannah and we note that shaitan was successful in his attempt while they were in Jannah. How much more should the people of Iman of Akhirat make effort and endeavor so that they procure Akhirat? Qatada is mentioned in, in Tafsir Tabri. Rabbana zalamna anfusana that they made this dua, Ya Allah, we have oppressed ourselves, we have done wrong by breaching your command. And Ya Allah, illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna lanakunanna min al khasirin. Ya Allah, if you do not forgive our oppression and our wrong and our zulm, and you don't have mercy on us to give us tawfiq, to abstain from guna, and give us tawfiq to surpass and excel in ibadah, then we will be devastated and destroyed in dunya and akhirat, a shak and a shad. There will be more destruction for us. So Allah, shower your mercy and forgiveness on us. Ya Rabbi araita in tubtu wa staghfartuka. Adal alayhi salam addressed Allah. Ya Allah, my greatest need is Tawbah and to turn to you. And if I am successful in achieving that, what is the result? Qala idhan udkhiluka al-janna, yan you are a jannati. As for Iblis, falam yas'allu. Qatara sayin, he did not ask Allah for forgiveness. Wa sa'ala Allah an-nadhira. But he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a spite. Oh Allah, give me time, give me more time. Extend my life لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ So that I will dedicate my life to take them to Jahannam. فَأَعْطَى كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِّنْهُمْ مَا أَمْسَعَلْ Allah gave each of one of them what they asked for. Adam alayhi salam asked for maghfirah. Allah gave it to him. Shaitan asked for a spite, Allah gave it to him. This is a lesson for us that opportunities don't come by always. When there is that light, that nur, that moment, that opportunity to make over, to stay away from guna and to get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Mubarak ayyam come, Mubarak days, Mubarak nights, if our normal days are Mubarak and blessed, can we imagine how the Mubarak days and nights will be for that person? So let us try in our normal time to maximize on Akhirat and see what happens in the Mubarak days. But this will come when a person prioritizes and understands that Deen is my objective, Deen is Maqsood, Dunya is Ma'ud, Deen is my objective, Dunya is promised, and then after that comes needs, needs for clothing, for car, conveyance, for residence, for consumption, for nikah, marriage, etc. These are our needs, but our needs should not become our greed. And then the rest of the things follow. One professor, one ustad in his class was making tarbiyat of his students, so he took a jar and he filled it with rocks. And as it was full, he asked his students, is the jar full? They all agreed. Then the Ustad took a box of pebbles and poured it into the jar. As he shook the jar, the pebbles fell the crevices. The students again were amazed that they were wrong. Again he inquired, is the jar full? They agreed, the jar is full. Then he took another box of sand and shook the jar and fill the sand in the jar with whatever space was left. 
And then he told the students, now I want you to understand your life. Do you understand? The students said, Ustad, we don't understand anything. What do the rocks and pebbles and sand have significance? He said, the rocks are the most important priorities of life. Iman, Deen, Salat, Zakah, Hajj, Sawm, Taqwa, Qana'a, Ifa, Afia, Zuhud, the ambition for Allah and His Rasul is your priority. That's your focus in life. Then comes the pebbles. If the rocks are in place, there'll be place for pebbles. It'll fit in. Allah will make it fit in. Allah will solve the problem. Allah will crack the formula. Then comes your needs and necessities, whether it's your occupation, whether it's your adornment, whether it's your conveyances, whether it's your residence, whether it's your food, whether it's marriage. And he said, then comes last the sand. Everything else that follows will fit in properly. But you have to prioritize. If I fill the container first with sand, no pebbles or rocks would come in. If I filled my life with amusement and merrymaking and discussions and debates and getting into issues which are not important, if I filled my life with posting and selfies and all other forms of battle, then this container of time which is very limited will get full with the sand and you will not have any place left except a few spaces for your pebbles which are the necessities and the rocks will not fit in and you will have to compromise on your deen and when you compromise on your deen you've compromised on everything really salam addressed Sahaba Allah ukhbirukum bil mu'minin Do you know what's the proper definition of a mu'min? Man aminahu nas ala amwalihim wa anfusihim That person who people are protected, mankind are protected, their wealth and their persons are protected. A mu'min does not harm anybody, any creation of Allah. Amwalihim wa anfusihim and al Muslimu man salim al nas min lisanihi wa yadi. And a Muslim is who people are protected from his tongue. It's easy to find fault, it is easy to find flaws. Look at our own selves. We have two eyes and one tongue, two ears. Ulama explain that. The tongue is to speak less and listen more. The eyes are for one eye to see the good of others and the other eye to see my own flaws and faults. Wal mujahidu man jahad nafsahu fi qatillah. Who is a true mujahid? Who is a true warrior? Who is a true veteran and soldier? He is the one who at every given time 24-7 he is fulfilling the Amr of Allah. When the time of Fajr is there, he is up and awake. When the time to lower the gaze, his gazes are lowered. He is 24 hours of the day are in the obedience of Allah. Well Muhajir man hajar al khataya. And who is a Muhajir? That person who is making true hijrat is a person man hajar al khataya. He makes hijrat and he runs away, he says far, he migrates away from gunas and sin and ma'asiyat. Abu Dada radiallahu anhu say, Abudullah azza wa jal, ka'annakum tarawnahu, worship Allah as if you are seeing Allah. When your boss is watching you, how particular are you in doing your work? Allah is watching me. وَعِدُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ مِنَ الْمَوْتَى And consider yourself from the dead. 
Love every minute like it's your last minute, every second like your last second, and consider yourself amongst the dead, because the dead would have a lot of regrets and would have done a lot of things differently if you think you amongst the dead and see what they would have done differently, then your life would have been different. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ قَلِيلًا يُغْنِيكُمْ That having little is more better than كَثِيرٍ يُلْهِيكُمْ That having extravagance and a lot of wealth, but that wealth makes us disobey Allah. Be happy with the little that Allah will suffice for our needs. I've got enough that will suffice for our needs. I am happy with that. That is more important. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ الْبِرَّ لَا يُبْلَى وَأَنَّ الْإِثْمْ لَا يُنْسَى That know that good deeds will not dissipate and disappear. Allah will definitely record it and recompense will take place. But remember, sin will not be forgotten. Sin will not be forgotten. So make haste to make Tawbah and Istighfar before you die because it will be too late. Then you will not be able to do anything to cover up for that wrong and that sin and that ma'asiyah. It is said that the Tawbah of Adam salam was accepted because of five qualities. وَلَمْ تُقْبَلْ تَوْبَةُ Iblis. And Iblis was rejected. فَآدَمْ أَقَرَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ بِالذَّنْبِ That Adam a.s. accepted he did wrong. Accept. I've wasted my life. I've wasted my time. I've wasted my salat. What quality and kafir is my salah? وَنَدِمَ عَلَيْهِ And every regret and remorse that is tawba in, himself, in itself. وَلَامَ نَفْسَهُ and he rebuked himself, what are you doing? What is wrong with you? Wa asra bitawba. And he rushed to seek Allah's forgiveness. And number five, wa lam yaqnut min rahmatillah. No matter what wrong he did, he never lost hope in the mercy of Allah. فَمَنْ كَانَ حَالُهُ مِثْلَ حَالِ آدَمْ We have his condition is like the condition of Adam alayhi salam قُبِلَتْ تَوْبَتُهُ بِعُفُّلْ And have yaqeen that your tawbah has been accepted. وَمَنْ كَانَ حَالُهُ مِثْلَ عَلَيْ إِبْلِيسِ Whoever's condition is like Iblis لَمْ تُقْبَلْ تَوْبَتُهُ Then there is great, great warnings for him to have a resurrection like Iblis. Ibrahim bin Adam Rahmatullah used to say, لَنْ أَدْخُلَ النَّارِ وَقَدْ أَطَعْتُ اللَّهَ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ That I enter Jahannam and I'm thrown to Jahannam. And in that Jahannam I know I obeyed Allah fully my entire life. أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ أَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ It's more beloved to me entering Jannah. وَقَدْ أَسَيْتُ اللَّهِ But I know I disobeyed Allah. Meaning, if he was to be put in Jannah and he knew that he disobeyed Allah, فَالْحَيَا مِنَ اللَّهِ لِأَجْلِ ذُنُوبِهِ بَقْ That I disobeyed Allah and I cannot go into this Jannah. He will have حَيَا and feel shame. But if he entered Jannah, وَقَدْ أَطَعَ اللَّهِ And he knew I obeyed Allah. He will not have any regrets. He'll say, Ya Allah, I'm worthy of your Jahannam because I know I obeyed you and if you decide to put me in Jahannam, then I'm worthy of that. Makul Sham, you say, Man awa ila firashi thumma lam yatafakkar fi ma sana fi yawmihi That a person goes to bed and is not concerned of his actions in the day. A believer is perpetually worried and concerned about Akhirah. He cannot go to bed in laxity. فَإِنْ أَمِلَ خَيْرًا حَمِدَ اللَّهِ If he sees that his day was spent in the obedience of Allah, he praises Allah. وَإِنْ أَذْنَبَ إِسْتَغْفَرَ رَبَّهُ And if he sees that it was a deficiency 
He turns to Allah. وَإِن لَمْ يَفْعَلْ كَانَكَ مَذْكَ مِثْلِ التَّاجِرِ Then that person who does not have this condition and goes to bed negligent is like a person, a businessman who acquires wealth and he does not do hisab kitab, does not worry who's stealing in the business, how much damages are there, have any overpayments been done, are there any debtors in any collection that needs to be done. If he does not do hisab kitab, then he will become bankrupt and insolvent and wala yashrur. And he won't even know that he's insolvent. He'll open up businesses upon businesses. But by the time he knows it, he thinks he's a billionaire. But he finds out he's in the minus. We need to have this istizar and this diyan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear the disobedience of Allah. Strive to the obedience of Allah. It is said that uh, Hadith al Qudsi, uh, Abdi, Inni, Malik, I am the one who you see to turn to. La Azulu. I am eternal. I will be there forever. I am the being who you should obey. For, O oh, Insan, O oh, Adam, Obey me fi ma amartuka bihi. What I have commanded you, obey me. Wandahi amma nahaituka anhu. What I have forbidden you, stay far away from it. Hatta aj'alaka hayyan la tamut. A time will come when you leave this dunya. People will say you are dead, but actually you are alive. Ahya inda rabbihim. You will be alive. Enjoying the bounties of Allah, Abdi, and Alladi, Ida Akoli Shay, Kun, Faya Kun. I'm that Allah when I say Kun, it happens. Bain al Kaf, when known, Inama Amruhu, before the irada of Allah, just the intention of Allah of Kun. This is just for our understanding. This is the Salah. This is this Rabb. How can insan disobey Allah? The Hukama, the pious predecessors used to say that when people were advised and say, Sheikh, give me advice, they should say that don't alienate yourself from Allah. Don't alienate yourself from the creation of Allah. Don't alienate your nafs in yourself. Don't be harsh on these three. فَأَمَّا الْجَفَى بِرَبِّكَ With regards to Allah, you involve in خِدْمَةِ غَيْرِهِ مِنَ الْمَخْلُوقِ That you obey the creation and you disobey the Creator. This is shunning Allah. وَأَمَّا الْجَفَى مَا الْخَلْقِ And with regards to the creation, that you speak bad about them, you make ghibat about them, you have ill words about them, this is about general people. Imagine a person who speaks bad about the ulama. What will be his condition? And with regards to the nafs, you are causing an oppression when you break the awamir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It said about Ahmad bin Hassan used to say, I committed one guna and I cried for 40 years. People asked him, وَمَا هُوَ يَا عَبْدَ اللَّهِ What was the guna that you committed? He said, زَارَنِي أَخْلِي فَاشْتَرَيْتُ لَهُ السَّمَكًا فَأَكَلَ That I had a visitor, I bought for him food, fish. He ate it. And after eating it, I went to the wall of my neighbor. In those days, I used to say, you send, فَأَخَذْتُ مِنْهُ قِطْعَةَ طِينٍ فَغَسَلْتُ بِهَا يَدِي I utilized the soil from the wall of the neighbor and I washed my hands. I've been making toba for 40 years. I used that without his permission. <clears throat> when the nur of Iman enters the heart, there's no limit. The amal for today is when we go to bed to read ayat of the Quran. Mamin Muslimin Yaqudu Mandja'ahu Fayakra Surah Minal Kitab. 
من ديريد سورس إلا بعث الله له ملكا يحفظه من كل شيء ألا والسن an angel to protect him ننظر وعيد وقرأت الفاتحة وقول هو الله أحد من يريد سورة فاتحة إن سورة إخلاص فقد أمنت من كل شيء إلا الموت that you will be protected from everything you will be protected from every calamity difficulty hardship except death وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين